Hello children. We will now continue with our EVS lesson, the interrelationships between living things. The beautiful artwork on the title slide has been done by my student Dhruv. Thank you so much, dear Dhruv. In the earlier part, we had done that the needs of all living things is met in the environment like food, water, shelter, air. Animals live in places where, where all these needs are met. Animals are friends. Animals are useful to us in many ways. We get milk, food, etc. Animals are used in hard labor. Cattle dung is used as manure and to plaster houses. Dung cakes are used as fuel. It also yields gober gas, a renewable source of energy. It is our duty to take care of animals and protect them. Plants are friends. Just like animals, plants do give us abundantly. The family is enjoying a delicious meal of vegetables, pulses, cereals, etc. All got from plants. Yummy, says the boy as he is relishing the delicious aroma of food. Spices and condiments like chilies, pepper, hing, asafoetida, garam masalas like cloves, cinnamon add to the taste of our food. Sugar and jaggery is made from sugar cane. Beverages Cold drinks, fruit juices, tea, coffee are got from plants. Sandalwood and medicines are got from plants. We can see grandma making home remedies or medicines like kada from the medicinal herbs. Fiber like cotton and jute are got from plants. You can see the man weaving cloth from cotton. From the jute plant, we make sackcloth, ropes, etc. Nowadays, the fabric from jute is also used to make garments and decorative articles. Wood for furniture and farm implements is got from plants. Paper, ink, erasers, gum is also got from plants. Flowers for all occasions. No celebration is complete without flowers, be it festivals, weddings, birthdays, etc. So that's nature's gift to us. We grow plants that are useful to us methodically. The farmer ploughs his fields and makes it ready to sow the seeds. Once the seedlings come, it is important that they be watered regularly. We water them nowadays with modern methods like sprinkle irrigation and the drip irrigation. To ensure a healthy crop, the farmer has to put manure for the plants from time to time. He needs to protect the crops from harmful pests and insects. So he sprays pesticides. Food chain We know that animals and plants are interdependent on each other. Plants prepare their own food with the help of sunlight and water. Plants are eaten by animals and insects. On your screen you can see grass prepares its food with sunlight and water. Grass is the food for grasshopper. Grasshopper is eaten by the frog. Frog is eaten by the snake. Snakes are eaten by hawks. And when these animals die, their bodies are decomposed by fungi. The mushroom picture that you can see is one of a type of fungi. Once these bodies decompose, it becomes excellent manure for the plants to grow well. And thus the cycle continues. Think and tell. Why does the Indian rat snake or the daman live around fields? In the earlier lesson, we have seen that rats are big enemies to crops. They destroy the crops. So the daman snakes live around fields and eat them up and thus protect the crops. 
Animals have different ways of catching their prey. Now here you can see the chameleon having a long tongue. The end is sticky. The insect sticks to the tongue and makes a good meal for the chameleon. Frogs, lizards also have sticky tongue to catch their prey. Another example of a food chain. Carrots are eaten by rabbits. Rabbits are mealed to a fox. Foxes are eaten by the lion. Corn is eaten away by rats. Rats are eaten by owls. And the owl. once all these animals die, the bodies are decomposed by the fungi. Aquatic animals. Animals that live in water are called as aquatic animals. The seahorse, the starfish, the dolphin, shark, octopus, jellyfish are all examples of aquatic animals. Animals that are able to live on land and in water are called as amphibians. Example, the turtle, the crocodile, the salamander, frog, crab and mudskipper are examples of amphibians. Animals living on land are called as terrestrial animals. For example, the zebra, giraffe, deer, elephant are examples of land animals. Animals that can soar, fly and glide naturally in the air are called aerial animals. Arboreal animals. Animals like the monkey, the galago or the bush baby, the leopard, the bat, the koala bear, all live on trees. Now here you can see the monkey is living on the tree and eating the fruits. What is the advantage of these animals? Being at a height, they are able to defend themselves from their enemies. They can eat the fruits of the trees to satisfy their hunger. You see the monkey and the squirrel are eating fruits from the trees that they live on. Birds build their nest too on the trees. Now, how are these animals supportive to the trees? Let us see. Now, as these animals move, they spread the seeds of the fruit they have eaten through their droppings. And because of this, the seeds start taking root and they grow in different places. You can see the bird having the hatchlings in the nest and feeding it. And plants are interdependent. As much as plants are useful to animals, animals in turn help plants. Right? So how do the animals help? They help in seed dispersal. The bird is seen eating the fruit. Correct? Cattle are grazing. Now, when the cattle is grazing, there is a plant called as the burr. You can see it has got spikes on the fruit. They stick to the body of these animals. Now, when these animals move around, what happens is that the seeds fall off their bodies and they take root in new places. Thus, the plants grow, the seeds are spread far and wide and the plants grow in new areas. You see plants growing in leaking pipes, near leaking pipes and cracks of walls. Why is that so? We know that birds eat fruits and they sit on the pipes to drink water when it is leaking. They also visit the cracks of in, to eat the insects. In the process, what do they do? They spread the seeds through their droppings. Soon, the seeds take root and grow into a new plant. We can see an egret sitting on the buffalo. Egret is the white bird. Why does the egret sit on the buffalo? Let us see. As the buffalo treads on grass, it frightens the insects which fly out of the grass. The egret on the buffalo's back swoops down to catch and eat them up. 
Now, dreads means to walk. So when the buffalo is walking and swishing its tail, the insects get disturbed. So what does a egret do? It quickly makes a good meal of them. Crows and other birds also ride on some animal bag. They feed on insects like ticks and lice that live in. Now for an interesting craft activity, you will be making a face of a rabbit or any animal, whichever you choose. You will take two strips of paper, which is cut like this. The paws, the hind paws and the fore paws. Next you will take this paper and you will stick the two parts in cross. Then we will start folding it. After we start folding it, we will cut off the excess part. After having folded that, we put a strip behind and we stuck the face. After sticking the face, you put the front paws and you put the hind paws. And so when you keep it and you shake, your bunny rabbit speaks to you. Hello bunny rabbit, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Bye bye, see you later. I hope you enjoyed the craft activity. After having followed the lesson carefully children, I am sure you will be able to solve this exercise in a nice and neat handwriting. A big thank you to Zoya for the beautiful artwork of the slide and thank you children. Stay safe.